All right. This show's pretty sick, hey? Outstanding. All right, I'm going to bring on your final act of the night. Uh, the run sheet said I have to come out for 30 seconds, so I'm sort of just... <laughs> fulfilling my contractual obligations. Will, how are you travelling, mate? Yeah, good, mate. I dislike you. <laughs> All right, who's ready for the final act of the night? <laughs> Guys, you're going to absolutely love him. Uh, he's... One of Sydney's finest. You might have seen him on Fox Sports. Let's have the biggest round of applause we've had yet. Clap it up. Clap it up. Welcome to the stage, Andrew Barnett. Hello. Round of applause for Billy Darcy, ladies and gentlemen. He's doing a great job tonight. Sounds like it's been a fun gig, man. I, uh, I'm so glad I'm back in Sydney. I'm so glad to be back. I just spent a month in Melbourne, which I really enjoyed. Had a lot of good fun. Anyone in from Melbourne? Fucking good. Um, <laughs> now they're probably watching on TikTok. It'll be right. I, I had a good time down there. They got the electric scooters that we're about to get here in Sydney. Right? I was riding them everywhere I went in Melbourne. I was having a great time. I don't think I will ride them here in Sydney because in Sydney I've got uh, dignity. <laughs> but uh, fuck, in Melbourne, turns out I'm a dickhead, eh? I was having a great time. <laughs> Just riding everywhere, big stupid grin on my face, like, fucking, hey! <laughs> it's how you know it's not real transport, by the way, because no one rides proper transport with a big stupid grin on their face, do they? Like, you see someone in traffic out here with a big grin on their face, you're like, fuck, he's, he's about to mow down some cyclists, this bloke. <laughs> he's, mate. The real worry is if you see someone on the train with a big grin on your face, you're like, he's going to whip it out for sure, I'm moving carriages. Like... <laughs> so it is good to be back. I, uh, I, live in, uh, I live in southwest Sydney. Any southwest Sydney people in? Yeah, fucking oath. Just mark where they are, please. Uh, <laughs> now, if you don't know Southwest Sydney, you, you've probably heard of it. It's on the news quite a bit. Um, it's a good part of the world, man. It's a good part of the world. It's, it's, it's interesting because Sydney's got a lot of different areas with different reputations. I've lived in quite a few. I didn't grow up. I grew up in the country. But uh, I was interesting because I, I feel like, you know, the whole racism thing's getting better. But I've got to say, you know, some areas of Sydney have a little bit of reputation for being a bit insular or racist or whatever, like the Shire. Um, <laughs> no, they do. Like, but I've lived in the Shire, right? I've lived in, in the Bankstown area. The most racist thing I ever saw was in the Bankstown area. Um, I was in, I don't know if you guys know the Bankstown Centro. You guys know what a Centro shopping centre is? It's the shopping centre you get when your suburb's too shit for a Westfield. Um, <laughs> It's one above a Stockland in the rankings, guys. <laughs> the Stocklands are mostly just one big flat car park and a few shops. It is... Uh, but, yeah, I was in the Bankstown Centro, right? It was a very multicultural part of the world. Love, the, love that area, right? And I'm there and there's literally people from every corner of this great earth in that uh, shopping centre just enjoying commerce, right? And I'm having a good time. <laughs> and, yeah, it was great, right? You, you know what I'm into. And um, so I'm in that environment. I saw a guy wandering through that shopping centre with a white power neck tattoo. And I had the same reaction. I was like, whoa, I'm giving him the silent treatment. That's it, right? We're not going to be friends. Because I had the reaction I think sane people do when you see that. I, I knew that racism existed. I'd never seen it in real life, right? And I, I had the reaction I think normal people do where I, at first I was like, oh, is it, I shouldn't be allowed to have that. Like, I started like, is that right? Is, he, is it that real? And then I, like, I started to get quite angry. Like, someone should do something about that. He shouldn't be allowed to have that. And then my brain just went, hey, Andrew, settle down. Like, it's 2022 and we're in Bankstown. Right, at this point, the joke's on him. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, because that can't be a convenient way to live your life anymore in Sydney, but particularly in Bankstown, because I was starting to think about it. I was like, okay, well, who doesn't he like? Like, okay, he doesn't like black people, doesn't like Arabic people, doesn't like Jewish people, doesn't like Indian people, doesn't like Pakistani people. He doesn't like Asian people from any part of Asia. All I could think was, where does he go to the doctor? <laughs> You know what I mean? Because I don't know what it's like everywhere, but in Bankstown, fuck that, it takes some shopping around. And uh, he didn't look like he could afford to be fussy either. Just, you know what I mean? Strictly a bulk bill dude, you know what I mean? Like, you know. If you've noticed that about the white power guys, never a good example of white success. It's always just some dude who's like, yeah, yeah, I'm part of the master race. He's living in a caravan park someplace. It's, it's got no tourist attractions, you know what I mean? It's like, mate, you're married to your cousin and you work at the tip, like... This isn't what Hitler had in mind, champ. You know what I mean? <laughs> Very weird, man. So I like it down there. I've got a good life. I, I enjoyed my time in Melbourne. I was, uh, I was hanging out with some of the younger guys, some of the younger comics, trying to bridge that gap. Because I just turned 40. I had no idea how short the generation gap would be between me and these guys in their 20s. You in your 20s, dude? How old are you? 21. 
21. Fuck yeah. So, what's your name? Will. Will. Oh, you're the guy he hates. <laughs> yeah, cool. I could see that. You're better looking. You're probably more successful than him. Yeah, I could see how he'd be jealous. Um, Will, I don't understand. There's stuff I don't understand about your generation, right? Because I'm literally, I'm literally 19 years older than you. But I just, there's some stuff like your generation of guys, for some reason, right? You guys refuse to answer your mobile phone if you don't recognise the number that's calling, right? But you're more than comfortable sending a picture of your dick to someone you've never met. Do you know what I mean? Like, where are your boundaries, Will? Do you know, like. What's the guiding principle, brother? You know, because they'd be like, these guys would be like, mate, I'm not answering that. That could be anyone. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> Hang about, someone just swipe right, got to take a fresh one. Here we go. Like, fucking. It's so weird. I don't get the dick pic thing. I'm not, I'm not into it. Because it wasn't even an option, though, when I, like, I've been married 15 years, Will. Like, when I was first dating, like, if I'd wanted to send a dick pic, like, I would have had to get it developed. You know what I mean? That's. <laughs> That's an extra step in the process, isn't it? You know what I mean? You've got to put it in the chemist, wait two days, you get it back, there's a little sticker. Oh, it looks like you had your finger over the lens. It's like, nah. That's what it looks like. That's uh, it's bizarre, man. It's bizarre. I don't think I'll ever send one. These guys were trying to convince me, man, if you were dating again, you'd, you'd send one. If you, if you and your missus split up, you'd send one if you were on the apps. I'm like, no, I wouldn't, right? Because personally, when it comes to dick pics, I've got a policy, Will. My policy's this, right? <laughs> My policy is this, is I don't want to show anyone my dick unless I'm there to give it some context, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, he can't be out in the world on his own, you know? He needs his spokesperson along for the ride, doesn't he? Some shit needs explaining, you know? I, mean, I had a woman in her 20s who did a show recently, she's got me, why wouldn't you send one to your wife? I was like, fuck, she's not that impressed in person, you know what I mean? Like, after 15 years of marriage, man, if I sent her one now, she'd just be confused, eh? <laughs> she'd be like, yeah, I told you, it looks like a freckle to me. If you're really worried, go see the doctor. <laughs> it's insane. It's insane. Are these, these your parents, man? <laughs> yeah, this is not awkward at all. They're good parents, aren't they? <laughs> you, you, are tr you, you, you are trying to get as small as you can, like, Ma, stop talking about dick pics. I'm sitting next to my parents. Fair enough. Are you, what, what's your name, dude? Marco. Marco. Mar oh, sweet name, Marco. That, are you a romantic man, Marco? Uh, man, what? <laughs> he is. Yeah, he's got a name, Marco. As if he's not. There's never been an unromantic Marco. <laughs> I'm trying to be more romantic for my wife. Because uh, I'm, I'm, I, it doesn't come naturally to me, right? Because you know how, like, you know, they say you model your relationships on what you see early. So you, you'll have a chance to be romantic because your dad's a romantic guy. He expresses himself, right? But my dad was a country Aussie dad from that generation of country Aussie men that didn't chat about their feelings, right? The best my mum could hope for out of dad in terms of feelings chat would just be something like this. Listen, love, I've got lots of feelings. You're involved in most of them. <laughs> That's all you need to know. <laughs> God bless mum, she was happy with that, you know what I mean? But my wife's a modern woman. She deserves romance. She wants romance. I'm trying to be more romantic for her. I, uh, I, have, I, I constantly try, I fail. Like, I had a go recently that didn't go well. Um, do you guys all know the song Tiny Dancer by Elton John? Yeah, right? My wife told me, she said, Andrew, it's a beautiful song. I love that song. It's so romantic. Right? I was like, beautiful, Andrew, you're a genius. You can use that knowledge to make a romantic gesture for your wife, right? So it was a little while ago. We'd, uh, we'd not long gone to bed. And I was thinking about the song, I was thinking about the words of the song. And all of a sudden it dawns on me, I was like, oh my God, we're lying here. There's no one near. So she could hear me as I said, softly, slowly. <laughs> Hold me closer. <laughs> Tiny. <laughs> Dancer. <laughs> Turns out, that's more creepy than romantic. Uh, it freaked her right out, eh? She, she didn't go to sleep for ages after that. I'm actually starting to think maybe Elton John isn't the ladies' man he'd have us believe he is. Uh, that's a dumb joke to end my set. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Andrew Barnett. Have a good night.